I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move is Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. So this is actually my first time to show myself and my face in front of camera in my Rico GR3 diary series. Um, I've been using this camera and I've been making a lot of videos and you know some stories and reviews about this camera. So today I'm actually in London at the moment and I am currently around Monument and Tower Bridge area and I thought that I would probably just take the camera with me and take some pictures in the nice picturesques and nice landscape in London. Now for the setting of the camera I will be using an aperture for about 4.5 to 11. It really depends because I wanted to have a, um, a very clear and kind of like a very sharp pictures. So I think for kind of landscape and architectural pictures, I think it's good to have a higher aperture. But the Ricoh Jerry Free camera is really good. Um, you don't really need to have a higher aperture. Sometimes you can shoot for a 2.8 aperture on this camera and it still would look good. So it really depends what your preference and your artistic style is. Um, if you're happy with a 2.8 aperture, then that's really good. But if you are also able to shoot with an aperture of 11, that, that is also good. I mean, it really depends on where you are with your lighting situation and how you're going to adjust your, um, your lighting, your exposure, and that includes your ISO and your speed, and you can just work around it. If you have a very good picture and you're happy with, let's say, 2.8, 4.5, or 11 aperture, then you can do so. It, it really doesn't matter. I think what I've noticed with the Ricoh Jeffrey camera is that it's very, very good in taking pictures. Even if it's like a very low speed level or aperture is like 2.8, it still be very, very clear and the image is still gonna look good. But I think my advice is just feel free, experiment with your Ricoh Jeffrey camera as to what will be the best setting for you and you can work yourself around there. Either you could improve it, build it up, or you could keep the setting as how you want it. But anyhow, I'm here in London and I'm going to take you around this area here, take some nice pictures of the building, and I hope you will enjoy this video. Okay guys, for context, I'm gonna show you how to shoot with a 2.8 aperture and it's still gonna look good. So what I'm gonna do here now is basically, this is the, the image that I'm going to take a picture of. And what I'm gonna do now is just basically adjust my overall exposure. So I think I'm just gonna look for a good spot. So just bear with me, I'm holding two cameras at the same time. So I'm probably just gonna adjust the speed. So this is a 2.8, so I'm just gonna to compare to you an aperture of 2.8 and an aperture of like five to 11. And I will let you decide that how good it is. So currently I'm on a speed of 250, the aperture is 2.8 and the ISO is 125, which is not too bad. Um, the lighting is quite good at the moment because we still got a little bit of sunlight. So this is the setting of the camera and this will be the picture with a aperture of 2.8. I mean, as you can see, it's still looking very good and very sharp. All right, guys, I'm loving this area here. Um, I just like the green reflection on this section here. So um, I'm still shooting at 2.8 aperture and my um, speed is 125 and my ISO is 125. So I'm just gonna take pictures of this area here because it looks really good. Um, see if I can take some pictures of there's people walking by this area, which would be good. All right, so the, the next part of my pictures, I'm going to show you an aperture of 
higher than 4.5 to 11 and you could see the differences in the pictures well i don't think you could see any more difference but um judge it for yourself all right guys i'm gonna try to shoot with an aperture of 4.5 and as you can see it's very dark here but because i've increased the aperture then that's going to be a little bit darker so i'm just going to adjust my iso and get my exposure right speed i can lower down um, it's very static so it should be okay um, what i'm taking a picture of now is basically the reflection of the skyscrapers on the mirror so let's take that picture so this is 4.5 let's have another look at another angle um, okay so i'm actually increasing my aperture but to compensate for my setting i've increased my iso as well Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm actually shooting now with an aperture of 8.0. The speed is 100 and the ISO is 640. Um, I think I've pretty much adjusted my exposure. So this is the, the shot that I'm going to take at the moment with this beautiful landscape here. Again, it's an aperture of 8.0. So we've pretty much increased our aperture levels. Let's take that shot. Perfect. So now guys I'm going to shoot with an aperture of 11 so obviously as I increase my aperture the image is going to look a little bit more darker um, to compensate for that I'm going to adjust my speed and increase my ISO just to get an overall well balanced and well exposed image so let's see what it looks like so this is my shot right here so what I'm going to do now is basically increase my aperture to 11 and as you can see the image really gets darker now to compensate for this i've already increased my iso to 1000 and i set my speed at 200 so i think that looks okay for me so what i'm going to do now is just going to take that image so there you go that's an image and that is an aperture of 11. now for context what i'm going to do is show you the aperture of um, 2.8 so bear with me because I'm actually holding two cameras here. So 2.8. So obviously I've reduced the aperture to 2.8, which is really low. And as you can see, the image is really bright. So I'm just going to adjust my ISO and lower it down to 100 to the lowest. And to get a, li a little bit of a, um, a good exposure, I'm going to increase my speed and just look for that perfect spot for a good image. So let's, let's do a comparison. So this is 2.8. So now that's the 2.8 image. Now let's go over and increase it to about five. Now it gets darker. Now again, I'm gonna increase my ISO and probably reduce my, my speed to get an exposure, a good overall exposure. Now this is the image of a 5.0 aperture. Let's take the picture. And let's have another image of, oh sorry, now I've pretty much reduced my, my speed there to 60. But then again, like I said to you, the Ricoh Jeffrey camera, even though, even though the speed is really low, it's still capable of taking um, an image that is not blurry and less shaky. It's still going to give you a very sharp image. But for the context of this, I'm going to adjust the speed to like 125. And to expose the um, image, I'm just going to increase the ISO without compromising much of my speed. So I think that looks okay. Picture. Now let's proceed to increase it to about 8. So that looks okay actually for me. 
um, yeah, that looks a good image, so let's do that. So guys, I've taken a similar subject with three different apertures, the 2.8, the 5.6, and the 11. So I'm gonna show it on screen now, and you can decide yourself um, how different they are or how the image would look like. Well, obviously, if you have an aperture of 2.8, some areas is gonna be very blurry, but if you have an aperture of 11, if you compare both, um, I think one of those pictures is gonna be looking more clearer and more crispy when it comes to an image. But then again, I, I said I said this so many times in this video, the Ricoh Jeffrey camera is really good. Even, even though you're gonna shoot at an aperture of 2.8 and you're gonna shoot at an aperture of 11, it's still gonna give you an incredible image. And even if the, the, the speed is really low, it's still not gonna give you a blurry or a shaky image. So just bear that in mind because the, the, the shutter speed, you know, the shutter of the Ricoh Jeff GR3 camera is really good, but even though it's slow, slow speed, it doesn't really give you that blurry image. But just bear that in mind, as, as, as long as you know the concept behind your speed, your ISO and your aperture, you're gonna be fine in taking the picture. Let's talk about ISO and how much ISO you should be using for your image. So obviously if you're shooting outdoors where there's um, sunlight and there's a lot, lots of light source. So I normally tend to use the lowest ISO as much as possible because the lowest ISO will give you the best quality image. But obviously if you're in a very low lighting situation or you need to shoot with an f-stop, let's say about 11, and that's going to make your image more darker. So obviously you have to compensate for your image. Now, um, the higher ISO you have, obviously the more noisy it's going to be on your image. So think about how it's going to impact on your image. Now the Ricoh Geoffrey camera is really good because it's got a, a range of an ISO from 100 to about 120,000. Now, let's be realistic. If you are going to use an ISO of 120,000, um, the question is, is that an image that is going to be usable? Um, I don't think an ISO of 1200, although it's there, um, but if you're going to use it, it's not going to be an image that is very good. It's going to be very noisy and I don't think it's good to use it for prints or for even social media posting. So think about your ISO. For me, um, you have to work around with your speed and your light source. Um, and you adjust your ISO to compensate and expose your image. Obviously, if you um, use a higher ISO, then that's gonna degrade and that's gonna be a very noisy image. So my suggestion is, um, I think, use the Ricoh JR3 camera, look for the perfect ISO, that when you upload it on your computer, the image is gonna be looking good. Even though there's a little bit of a noise, that's still gonna be a workable image. It's still a usable image. But, but otherwise, if you're gonna keep using your ISO without knowing what it's for, then um, you, you're not gonna have an image that's very usable. All right, guys, I'm just gonna continue walking around London and continue with my walk for photography with Ricoh Geoffrey camera. So stick around.
Anyway guys, I have come to the last part of my video. Um, I really had fun shooting with the retail geography camera. Thanks for hanging around. Thanks for watching my video and I shall see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.